Here we are given the graph of the original and we'll sketch its derivative. So here we go. Look for the easy numbers first, namely the horizontal tangent lines. And as we can see, we have it here, here, and here, right? And as we all know, the slope over there at these three points will be zero, meaning that the derivative will be zero at these three points. So I just have to go down and we have the zero. And again, that's the x-axis here. And likewise, this right here will also give us zero for the derivative. And then likewise, this right here will also give us zero for the derivative. So we have these three points. Then you can do the following. Notice that we actually have two points of inflections, namely here and here, right? So if you look for that, you will see this right here, in fact, you actually get the biggest slope from here to here, right? So what you can do is you can estimate that if you say this is like slope two, maybe, then you just have to go down and you just pick your y value here. Let's say this y value is two. So two for the f prime. And the good thing about this is that notice any points that close to this, let's say right here, this is actually going to be a smaller slope than that. So when you go from here and you go down, it has to be a smaller y value than this. Similarly, if you go at here and you'll see that this right here is actually slightly smaller than that, so you should have a lower y value like that, right? Likewise, for this, in fact, it's the same idea, but this time it's actually negative slope. So you actually have to go down to the negative y value right here, so below the x-axis. And again, remember, maybe this helps if you put on positive derivative and then, you know, negative derivative. Positive f prime and then negative f prime. This right here is negative, so that's why we go below, right? And then of course, if you go right here, this is not as small, not as negative as that. So you actually have to go down. It has to have a higher y value like this. And just continue. And again, you just, you're just like a computer. Pick a point on the curve and then just draw a little tangent segment and compare with other ones that you know already. This right here, it's flatter than that. And it's negative, so you actually go down maybe like this. All right, so that's pretty much the idea. And now, perhaps I'll just come here then. Okay, for this side, if I draw a little tangent segment, maybe like negative two, negative one whatsoever, but I will again just line up and then I'll go down, let's say it's like this. And then if you go right here, you will see that this is actually really, really downward, right? So you actually have a much smaller y value, so you should have a lower y value right here like this. And if you go to the other side, this right here, maybe like slope one or two, I don't know, like this by estimating, right? But based on this, you can see that at this point, this has a higher slope than that. So when I go down, it has to be a higher y value. So I will actually do like something like this. So that's pretty much the idea. And now, of course, if you connect the dots with a curve, you will see here is my graph. I know, I know, I know, okay? I'm connecting the dots. I am connecting the dots. But anyway, that's pretty much the idea. And notice that the truth is this is a fourth degree polynomial, right? It looks like one. I don't know what happened after that, but it looks like a fourth degree polynomial. If you differentiate a fourth degree polynomial, you get cubic, looks like this. Here we are given the graph of the original function f, and we'll try to sketch its derivative, right? So here is the deal. We shall be looking for the easy slope first. And of course, the easiest is when we have a horizontal tangent line. And of course, right here, we do have a horizontal tangent line. So that means I will have to go down and that will give me zero for the f prime, right? So again, this is going to be my f prime graph. And now I will just start from the left hand side and I'll pick a, the next easiest number to look for, which is slope equal to one and that's 45 degree. So if you look at maybe right here or so, and again, we can only estimate and all that. So if you look at this like this right here, right? The slope is about positive one, namely 45 degrees. So I will just go down and let's say here is my one. So I will have to you know, just remember one and that's the F prime value. And then you can just continue. Well, if you move away right here, this right here, it's actually going to be bigger slope than that, right? It's deeper, it's going upward. So this right here, when you go down, you should have a higher Y value. So maybe like this, right? And then we'll continue. So let's say if we are right here, this right here, in fact, even 
having a bigger solar nest, I will have actually go down, but I will have to have a bigger Wi-Fi like this. And perhaps we can do another one. This right here, in fact, is actually a much higher slope as well, much bigger slope, so I will actually put on something like this. Not necessarily like straight line, but maybe like curve and all that stuff, right? Now, go to the other side. Well, let's look for 45 degrees this way, so we get a slope negative one, which is about right here, maybe, I would say, right, like, like this, and now, okay. So from here, I will just trace down, and we will have a negative one slope like this. And then continue, right here. Hmm, this right here, it seems like, uh, it seems like this right here is actually more down, right? It goes down more. So when I go down, I will have a lower Y value. So that's what I have. However, though, I noticed that this right here is what we call the point of inflection because as you can see, you have a concave down situation and then a concave up situation, right? So in fact, this right here is going to be the smaller slope, right? So it's going to be down there. Because after this point, if you move here, if you draw a little tangent segment, you can see that this is flatter than that. So when you trace down, it has to have a higher y value than the earlier point. This right here, when you trace down, it has to have a higher y value than the point that we had earlier. And likewise, if you're just moving to, the, to this point, for example, this right here, again, it's negative, but this is flatter than that. So when you go down, it has to go below the x-axis, but it has to be having a higher y value like this. And in fact, once you are right here, the slope is almost like zero, so in fact, you go down, and again, it has to be below zero, below the x-axis, so like that. So I would say the graph will look like something like this. I will just kind of graph this, like a curve, actually, and then like that, right? So somewhat like this, and again, we'll just estimate as long as you get the right shape, that will be correct. Here we are given the graph of the original function, and we'll try to sketch its derivative. So here we go. Well, look for the easy number, namely the horizontal tangent line. As we can see, we have one right here. So that tells us f prime will be zero over there. So I will just have to go down, and I will have to hit zero right here. And again, this is going to be my f prime graph. Now, I will maybe start from the left-hand side. Up to you, which would you want to do? By the way, I will just pick a point that say right here maybe. So you can see that this right here maybe is a slope equal to one. Well, just estimate it, but I will just go down like this. I'll put a point that say this is my one. Now, what's next is important. Notice that right here, this right here is actually a higher slope than that. So when you go down, you have to have a higher y value than the previous point like this. And technically, this is meant to be a semicircle, all right? It's meant to be a semicircle. And the crazy thing is that when you are right here, this is almost vertical. So this is actually way high, way higher than the other ones that we have seen right here. So this is actually vertical. So in fact, you actually have vertical tangent. I will just put down um, dash line for the vertical tangent line. So that's pretty much the left hand side. You actually get like this. Now from the right hand side, well, if you go right here, this is like negative one. So I'll just go down to negative one. And likewise, I'll just continue. This is uh, more negative, so I will have to go below lower y value than that. And again, I'm just trying to estimate, right? And once you are right here, again, this is going to be a really, really straight down already. So it's even lower, so that stuff. And right here, this is meant to be a un um, the semicircle. So it's, again, vertical tension line. Anyway, all in all, you actually just get like this. Connect the dots. Yeah, somewhat like this, all right? So again, just try your best to give the best shape possible, and that's it. So again, once again, that's the semicircle graph, and that will be the derivative for it. Okay, we're given the graph of the original function, and we'll try to sketch its derivative. So here we go. Well, notice that this right here, we have a bunch of corners, so we actually do not have the rough here, here, and there. So be really careful. But the good thing is that this, 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 and that, they're all straight lines. So we actually just have constant derivative, right? So for example, pick a point right here. You know that this is going to give us a slope. It's just going to be a number. And notice that though, this right here, it's actually flatter than that. This is more down, right? So in fact, if you start right here, this is more like slope equals one, yeah? 
So I will actually go down and that will give me slope equal to one. Let's say this is my one. And then if you are right here, in fact, it's just the same line, right? So still equal to one. So from here to here, you can see that the slope is always going to be one. So I will actually connect the dots like this, right? Likewise, if you go to the other side, this right here is like negative one, negative one, negative one. So actually, we'll just go down like this. This is negative one, negative one, negative one, like that. And again, I will just connect the dots like this, right? And earlier we talked about it, this right here, it's not as steep as this. So if I said this right here is negative one, so I will actually have to go a little bit above. So let's say maybe it's like negative one half. So again, a little bit above. And then if you put a point, it's going to be like this and all the stuff, right? So if you this right here is slope negative one half, then that will give me the graph right here. Likewise, for this part, again, straight line, looks like slope is like half of that maybe. And again, when we go down, it has to have a lower y value than the one that we had earlier. So it's like this, right? So that's pretty much the idea. And now at the end, we have to make sure that we indicate where we cannot differentiate this, right? Which is this, this, and that. To do this right here, we will actually have to use open circles at the endpoints. So there's no derivative here, here, and here. We are given the graph of the original and we will sketch its derivative. So here we go. First of all, look for the horizontal tangent lines. Of course, we can see that we have one right here and another one right here. So that means when we are making our f prime graph, well, at this point, when we go down, it shall be s0, namely on the x-axis. Likewise, when we line up right here, this right here should also hit the x-axis to be 0, right? So that's good. Now, start from the left-hand side maybe. Pick a point, okay? So you can see that this right here slope is like negative 2 maybe. And again, estimate it. So I will actually just go down negative 2, right? So I will just actually go down below the x-axis. Let's say it's right there. And then, if you moved away, let's say right here, this right here is more down, right? This is more down, so that means when I go down, it has to have a lower y value than the point I picked earlier. Now, notice that this portion of the graph, it goes down and then it becomes flat at this point, and then it goes down again, right? So you see, if I move here, if I pick a point, so here is the slow, small tangent segment. It looks like slope is negative one. Anyway, I'll just go down and let's say it's negative one or something like that. And then again, I'll just move on. This right here is steeper than that. That means it has to uh, lower y value when I go down like this. And likewise, again, we can just estimate. So this right here, it's about the same thing. But here's the interesting thing though. Go down, go down. But if you talk about concavities, this point right here, in fact, you see this portion is concave down and then it changed to concave up, right? So in fact, this right here is going to be the point that has the smaller slope. So in fact, when I go down, I will actually say it's like this. The slope right here is going to be smaller than that, so I will have to have a lower y value than the point that I picked earlier. And then, if I move away, let's say I'm right here. This, you see, the slope is bigger than that. It's slightly more flat, right? So when I go down, I will actually have to have a, wire, a higher y value than the one that I picked earlier. And then we continue. This point is even flatter. It's not as big as, it's not as small technically uh, as that. So I will actually have to go down like this. And then once we pass this point, as you can see, it's increasing, so we'll have to have passed this slope now. This right here is like positive one maybe. And then even bigger slope, so higher y value right here. And then even bigger slope than that, so I'll actually have to go down like this and have bigger y value. And so on, so on, so on. This right here slope is really big, so I'll actually just go like this. Maybe, something like that. So with all these points, of course we can connect the dots with a nice curve, so it will look like something like this. And again, it's the shape and we're just estimating. So this right here, uh, I think it's pretty good. Okay, we're given the graph of the original function and we'll sketch its derivative. Here we go. Unfortunately though, we do not have a place that has a horizontal tangent line, but we do have this point here. 
that it has a vertical tangent line. And remember, the slope of any vertical line is undefined. So right here, hmm, how can we do this though? Well, don't look at this point. But when you are approaching this point, the slope will be approaching past the infinity. Because you can see that at this point, maybe, the slope is actually really, really big because it's like almost going straight up, right? So keep that in mind. And in fact, we actually have a vertical asymptote at this point. Anyway, let's do the easy number ones first. I will just say maybe right here, I will have a slope equal to one. That looks to me is like, that looks like to me is like 45 degrees. So I actually go down. Let's say this is my past the one for the slope. And again, this is my F prime graph. Then move away, you will see that the slope right here is less than that. So when I trace down, we have to have a lower y value than this. And then we continue. If we're right here, this slope is actually less than that. So I actually have to go down like this maybe. Right? So I'll actually modify a little bit. I'll say this is my one and like half third or something like that. Right? OK, however, if we approach this, you can see that the slope is actually getting bigger and bigger. This right here. It goes pretty upwards, so I'll actually have a bigger y value. And in fact, as I said earlier, when we approach the vertical tangent line, we actually will end up with approaching infinity. So if you look at this portion, the graph will look like this. Right? So that's pretty much it. On the other hand, well, if you look at this, the slope is also pretty high and it's positive. So actually, we'll go like this. Right? And if you would like, you can actually pick an easier one. Let's say this right here, the slope is like 1. And you actually have to go down like this. Notice that this right here is steeper than that. So that's why this right here should have a higher y value than this. And again, if you move away, this right here is flatter. So I will actually have to go down and have a lower y value like so. And when you approach uh, this point, you have to go straight up. So the graph will look like this. In fact, it's supposed to be symmetrical, so I will actually just kind of um, modify this a little bit. So this right here is it. So it's like a volcano like that, right? And just get the shape right, and that would be perfectly okay. Maybe like this, you know, much better. Anyway, that's it.